So the Miller Theater um, has a special place in my heart because I remember coming here to watch kung fu movies and it had already started showing a lot of signs of wear at that time. But now, seeing what they have done with it, I mean, I've been in hundreds of theaters all over the world, and I'm just struck every time I walk into this theater. Oh man, there's a thousand reasons why the Miller is special. Just from a technical standpoint, it's a room with absolutely pristine sight lines and pristine sound. My name is Stephen Yules. I'm the marketing manager at the Miller Theater and a columnist with the Augusta Chronicle. The, the Miller, although it was built as a movie theater, has really become a music hall. Uh, it's what we're best at. Um, and so we've done, uh, we've done probably about 145 shows since the theater opened in January 2018. Uh, and it's sort of run the gambit. Uh, you know, Weird Al, to symphony concerts. Um, and, and we're adding them all the time. It's really a place that we book with the idea that everyone in this community should feel like there's something for them. It's important to have places where everyone in the community feels comfortable. Uh, and that's always been sort of our goal, you know, since the theater has reopened with this place, is we want everyone who comes in here to feel like, you know, the symphony owns the theater, and there is a management company that runs the theater, and there are acts that sort of take control of the stage here. But the truth is, it is Augusta's Miller Theater, and that is who should feel, you know, real ownership of the place. You know, Augusta talked for a long time about building a performing arts center, and what they wanted was a place that had these varying size venues in it and it was an 800 seat venue and about a 1300 seat venue and then like a 2500 seat venue. Opened in 1940, closed in 1985. Uh, it was built as an art moderne uh, movie palace. It was the second largest theater in the state behind the font. It's best known as a theater with absolutely pristine sight lines. Even today, if you sit in the back row of the theater, you can see the whole front edge of the stage, which is very unusual. You think she meant it? I know she meant it. Been me, I wouldn't have meant it. I might be trying to scare somebody or fool them or something, you know, but I wouldn't go that far, you know what I mean? I understand. But she was really leveling. She really was gonna kill herself if I hadn't stopped her. It was bought by Peter Knox about probably about 15 years ago. Uh, he fixed the roof, which was almost non-existent. Uh, took out a lot of the mildew, and then gave the building to the Augusta Symphony. And the Augusta Symphony spent 23 million dollars getting the theater back in shape. Um, a lot of the funding was through historic preservation tax dollars. And so because of that, everything that we could save has been saved inside the theater. Things that we could not save were reproduced exactly as they had been. And the only concessions we really made were things to make it a contemporary working theater. Oh, my name is Chris Lehigh, and I am a project manager and contract administrator with 2KM Architects in Augusta, Georgia. I was involved at the Restoration of Miller Theater from inception of the design all the way through the construction and the grand opening, and then after, um, after the theater was open, uh, any corrections or any things that needed fixed. The restoration of the work started with a, a dream to get uh, 
the facility back operational to its heyday, which was built in 1940. Uh, Frank Miller was a gentleman who the theater is named after, who was synonymous with entertainment here in Augusta, Georgia. So he um, had a few theaters, uh, and this was going to be his grand grand uh, theater in this area, which it turned out to be. My name is Russell Joel Brown. I'm an actor, singer, and dancer. Um, I was a full-time performer until the summer of 2017 when I um, retired from show business, but I came home to Augusta to um, be a drama teacher, and so now I'm a drama teacher and I support a lot of nonprofits in town, um, helping them to raise money for their causes. I'm just struck every time I walk into this theater, one, by the care that was taken um, with the renovation, and then also just the, I guess, the political and societal will to get a big project like this done. So um, what I find most important about that and about old theaters in general is that there's this continuity of the culture that's happening in the same place. And we have very few places like that, you know? We have a new thing over here or a new thing over there, and oh, this is the n next big thing, and so let's go and do that. And with these fits and starts in a culture, it's really, it's, it's not great. It's, 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 not, it's not what's best for the culture, in my opinion. You know, this is a place that generations of people from our community have come and gathered. It's a living piece of Augusta's history. So when you come in and you go upstairs and you grab that handrail, that is the same handrail that was installed, you know, in 1940. Everyone who has come in that, this theater has touched that handrail. That's a real, physical, tactile, connection to this community's past. That's, that's something you don't find everywhere. Probably my most favorite thing that we have in there is the water fountain. So you go to the water fountain and it's a pink and it's a green and it doesn't match anything in the building at all, but it's actually original and it's in excellent shape. Uh, the contractors were able to clean it up. There was a few dings and a few uh, holes here or there. They were able to patch those and uh, when you see that piece, you can't drink from it, but your eyes can actually drink in and see how, how beautiful uh, the restoration process can be. I think that if you have a place where the best of culture is expected, then the culture can grow and change, but the place remains the same. And it's kind of like human beings, you know? You can strive to be your best and you're gonna change as you go, go through, but there's an expectation that whatever you're interested in at that time, you're going to be the best at it, or you're going to try your best in this same vessel. So. I don't have the body that I moved to New York with in 1990. My voice is, I mean, it was really good at that time. I think it's really good now, but it's a very different voice. And so I think that there's something that speaks to the human spirit and the human experience that's the same when I walk into this building. The, the staff was incredible. The, the, the work, uh, I think the work spoke for itself. The construction firm did a great job. Um, you know, everybody involved from, from the owner standpoint, the, uh, the symphony orchestra, all the way through to the management group that runs the theater. Um, they put a great show that night and they made us all feel like we were in 1940s. It was glamour time. Tuxedos, red carpets, sparkles, all the, all the uh, bells and whistles. You couldn't and wouldn't build a theater like this again. Um, it's, and, and it's important when you can to save those pieces of history. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.